Welcome dummies, I'll be your host for this evening, and today we will be doing pixel art for the people who don't know how. Well first of all, what is pixel art? Pixel art is a digital art form that most people use for video games and those pegboard bead things. Anyway, it's an art style that was heavily used in the early days of video games as they were very limited in their color palettes and their file sizes. However, nowadays it's become its own respected medium that a lot of people actually admire and it is also pretty easy to get into because of the size restriction and how many squares you have to work with, so it is definitely a go-to style for non-artists. So you might be asking yourself, where can I actually do pixel art? Well, in my opinion, the personal best place to get started with pixel art has to be a sprite. You can use other tools like Photoshop if you have it, or even things like GIMP if you're on a budget of free, but you should see your software as an investment in making your life easier for the long run, so you might as well pick something up that is built for pixel art from the get-go. All right, let's talk sizing. If you want to get into pixel art and have no idea where to begin, start with an 8x8 or 16x16 16 canvas. Eventually you will be able to do art in a 32x32 32 or 64x64 64 64 canvas, but for now I would honestly say that 16x16 16 16 is the best resolution to get used to, as you can still get in a lot of detail at this level without the headache of getting in over your head and having too much blank space to work with. Being on the topic of blank space, let's move on to a tip I will give you that you need to really soak in to take your art to the next level. You've probably heard this a thousand times, but this is a tutorial for dummies, so I'm approaching this as if you don't know crap. Hey guys, we are having a brief intermission, so just stay tuned for the tips, but I need to talk about a few things before we move forward. So if you guys have been watching my channel, then you probably remember this guy. If we can smash 100 likes by the first week of this video coming out, yeah, well, you guys ended up completely killing that goal and getting a huge number of likes on that video. So today I'm here to ask you guys to help me out even more. I've been putting an insane amount of effort into this YouTube channel lately, and I'm not showing any signs of slowing down, but it would mean the world to me if everybody right now went down and liked this video because it's gonna help me get this video out to more people. So if you guys can drop 300 likes on this video, I'll know that you guys really appreciate the content and I will be dropping even more heat and just some insane videos that I thought would never be possible. And lastly, before we go to the video, I just wanted to say that I am having a Q&A video happening right now. So if you want to be a part of that, go into the description and the first link should be my Discord channel. So go into the Discord channel and drop your questions in the Q&A channel. I'm answering two questions per person. So if you're watching this when this video comes out, I'll be collecting submissions until next Tuesday, having the video drop a couple days after that. That's all for me, so back to the video. Anyway, something that is very valuable to understand about pixel art is that you need to make sure that every pixel in your art serves a purpose. What do I mean by this? Well, you have an insanely limited amount of pixels to manipulate on your image. Make sure to really use each and every one to its fullest potential. I'll talk throughout the video on how you can actually put this information into practice, but for now, just remember that you should have little to no pixels in your drawing that are randomly placed. So now that we have a basic understanding of what pixel art is, let's talk structure. When creating an object, you want to start by creating a silhouette of your image first, block out what the general shape is for your object, then work on adding color, details, and shading afterwards. As far as colors go, you have quite a lot of rules and things to follow, so I'll keep things brief and stick to the important stuff. So usually you will have three to four colors per material, so let's break that down. You're always going to have a base color that you use to color an image in, then usually you'll have a shadow of this color and a highlight of this color. Sometimes you find images with two base colors, a shadow and a highlight, but it's usually up to the artist and what they find fits their needs. To create shadows, you will almost always want to take your base color, decrease the value, decrease the saturation, and shift the hue closer to blue. The reason behind the hue shift is to bring out the coolness of the shadow's color, aka making it blue. 
Highlights are a bit more difficult, but you should get the hang of it with a little bit of practice. For creating lighter colors, there are two main ways of approaching this. First, you can do the complete opposite of what you did to make the shadow. Take your base color, bring the value up, increase the saturation, and shift the hue closer to yellow. Or, instead of increasing the saturation, you can also decrease it. You might be wondering when to use each method of creating lighter colors. Well, to keep things simple, increase the saturation on your highlights when you are creating a lighter color on a solid object. This would be for things like clothes and usually things in nature and decrease the saturation when you're working with reflective surfaces. So things like shines on metal, glass, and even things like skin. An alternative to this is going to a website called LowSpec. It is a very handy tool to get started in pixel art and they actually already have hundreds of color palettes that you can easily refer to for your own art if you don't understand colors right away. A tip I can give you for adding shading is to focus on one main light source for your image. Most lighting will usually come from either the top left corner or the top right. Try to be consistent with this and change the lighting source as your image rotates around to keep the lighting consistent in your piece. Next, let's discuss bordering your image. When creating outlines, you have three main ways of going about it. You've got the no outline, where your image has no outline, the hard outline, where your drawing is outlined in one solid color, and you have well, the overly complex and very time-consuming outline. Probably not the best name for it, but regardless, it is by far the hardest outline to pull off. Basically, you're going to take the colors of your image, make them darker, and add them as a border for your image. It might not sound like a ton of work, but when you realize that you have to do this for every single image in your game, yeah, it can get pretty time-consuming. Last, but certainly not least, is probably the most useful advice I have for you today. Because pixel art has very few squares you can actually use, it is very easy to see each and every last pixel another artist has used to make up their own art. Now, when I say this, I am not saying to just grab someone else's art, copy it, and move on, but here's the thing. Because you have to manually input each pixel on screen, it means that no one really has an upper hand on another person. Whether you use a $5,000 drawing tablet or your trackpad, every 4x4 cube will look the exact same. Look at references when you're drawing to see how other people have solved a challenge you are currently working on. Eventually, yes, you will be able to make your own art and have your own style, but when you're first starting out, look at references. See how the best sword was made, or the most perfect cardboard box. Start with good habits rather than spending three years just playing around with your art and being proud that you are 100% self-taught through your own imagination. That's honestly complete bullshit. And there are way too many resources out there now for you to be thinking like this in today's world. Analyze other people's art and break down each pixel placement. Study what they did right, how they went about creating a smooth curved edge, where you should set your lighting, how something should be positioned for a more interesting picture. Also, look at what they could have improved on. Take someone else's drawing and fix it. They don't call me a wise guy for nothing. Learning is a great way to learn, obviously, but teaching is just as important to really drill in those concepts and make them a part of your brain's comprehension. Well, that just about wraps up the basics of pixel art and how you, the dummy, can get started right away. I'm going to be putting some insanely useful material in the description of resources that help me shape my art to where it is today and what I continue to use moving forward on my journey. I'm by no means an expert in the field, but because of that, I find it easier to relate to beginners and help them start their journey. In the next episode on Tutorials for Dummies, we will be taking a look into how you can create games quickly and easily from scratch. Again, obviously no experience is necessary, so please make sure to attend the next video. Make sure to subscribe for more content like this soon. Thank you for all of your continued support. Here are some comments from the last video that gave me a laugh. So make sure and drop some heat in the comments below to possibly get featured in the next one. I appreciate and love every last one of you watching my content, but until next time, have a great life and stay safe during this time of crisis.